Welcome to Noises, the weekly report from Sustainable Media. Let's talk about the first war in Syria for the sake of clarity, because people are confused. Media present this situation in a distorted way, making the entire context look like a big chaos. For me, the thing is simple. It's all about oil and gas. There is a gas field in the Persian Gulf, actually the biggest gas field in the world. Qatar owns part of this field and they spoke with Turkey in 2009, two years before the beginning of the war. Qatar should have sold the gas through a pipeline crossing Saudi Arabia, Syria and Turkey to finally reach the European market because keeping it in Qatar is not worth it. The problem is that for the pipes to pass through Syria, they needed Assad's permission and Assad said no. Qatar, of course, did not like such answer, even because the ownership of the field is claimed by Iran too. This field is a very special one, given its dimensions. It provides access to both countries, either from Qatar and Iran. Those pumping it faster have a competitive advantage. Iran would also like to sell to Europe by building a green pipeline. Iran also asked to Assad. And Assad this time said yes. So the thing is plain and simple. Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Kuwait, all Sunnite countries, with USA, France, UK and Turkey, at least until it was part of NATO, since now Turkey is with Russia, don't want to keep Assad. The Shiite Iran, Shiite Hezbollah, want to keep him in power with Russia, that has two military bases in Syria and owns Gazprom, with which it already signed some agreements with Europe and therefore would like to keep selling them the gas. A few things seem very complicated. But that just because media mislead us. It's only geopolitics. There is a coalition on one side asking for a change, and on the other side another coalition that doesn't. This war has been going on for four years and a half, with more than 500,000 dead with civil women and children. We are told that only Assad is the main one the Damascus executioner. Nobody says anything about oil or gas. They tell us they didn't intervene for a long time and that they did it when he started massacring his people. Blessed by NATO, Saudi Arabia and Turkey deliberately sent radical jihadists in Syria. Their goal was to destabilize the Syrian society and they made it. If one gives jihadists little weapons, then it is possible to destabilize any country, as with Saddam in Iraq and Gaddafi in Libya in 2011. NATO countries, USA, UK, France, are with rebels, the jihadists, and when people realize what is happening, there will be a catastrophe. They say NATO fights terrorism. But in the end, this story is a bunch of lies. The mechanism repeats itself. Remember Colin Powell with a file in his hands saying Saddam had chemical weapons? We now officially know it was no true at all. And today, as we broadcast, they carry on like that, leading to misinformation using mass media. They tell the same story from a corrupted point of view. Maybe we will find out that file had just dust in it. Thanks for watching. See you soon.